Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Connor, here with my father. Kevin. And today, the new Arctic Monkeys album has been released. Today. It's the day. I, I saw, it was 12 o'clock last night, right? Yes. Very exciting. Um, we're doing it together. We're doing it together. This is going to be the first year. You've heard nothing? You've heard a single though, right? I, I've listened to the first single. Yeah. Um, I didn't listen to the other two that came out. Oh, you didn't? No, no. Oh, okay, cool. But I really liked the first single, um, which is the first track of this album. And and you weren't crazy for Tranquility on your first listen. Um, and it seemed like the comments on Patreon were kind of 50-50. Some people were like, yeah, I'm, I'm on Team Kevin. I'm not a huge fan, and, and the other half were Team Connor. Who, who had a couple of people had gotten tattoos of the album cover? Yeah, and they're definitely on Team Connor. So, <laughs> um, but it's interesting. So I'm, I'm really curious to see what happens here. If, if um, I was just I just read the credits saying that it is it is all written by um, Alex. Alex, yes, in, in its entirety, sort of like um, Tranquility Base. <laughs> Track number one: There'd better be a mirror ball. He's playing the piano again, the one that he got as a gift. Yes. Very James Bondy there. Don't get emotional. That ain't like you. Yesterday. Oh, I like that line. So if you want to walk me to the car, you ought to know I'll have a heavy heart. You're getting cynical and that won't do. I love where his voice is. It's where it's sitting. It's really good. It's in a great spot. It's not, It's so nice. Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah. So can we please be absolutely sure? Beautiful orchestration. Yeah. I don't know why, but Alex Turner's voice and that symphony just fucking her. Work. They're... Yeah, they Listen mesh the, so mesh, well. Yeah. Okay, already, already, one track in, I already have a connection to this album. More than Tranquility Bass. You know, lyrically, I'm interpreting what I feel there, and it, it just came more naturally. The symphony, his voice, um, it, the, the phrasing was a little bit more, it was a little bit different, but it was also... Not too... Not too different. Yes, yeah. yeah. Where I was saying that before it was felt very show tuny. this wasn't at all. This was... It was just enough off that it kept you really, really engaged. Still melodic and... Still melodic, still, you know, uh, really nice with the symphony. That was a fun track. That was that was really nice. That, that, that's the one I know. The only one I know. Oh, is this. it? Wow. Yes. So that, oh, wow. that was the first single. Um, and I absolutely love that track. Yeah. Track number two. I ain't quite where I think I am. Nice backgrounds, eh? Yeah. Okay, I'm getting disco vibes. They're talking about the disco ball. Mm. Orchestration's already back. Yes. Yeah. I like the eyes roll back. Yeah. Yeah. 
That was cool. Yeah. Stuck me with the symphony and then gave me the porno. Porno wah. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful work on this. Ha oh, ha. Hear those at the end? <laughs> yeah. That was cool. That was a cool mixture of, of, of stuff going on. You know what? It's, it's a symphony and, and porno wah. Yeah. A symphonic porno. You know what this reminded me of, though, right away, the, the, the whole feel of the thing and talking about disco and the disco balls and then um, all that kind of thing it gives me a feeling, like from the first track and the second track now, uh, like there's something 70s going on big time. Mm. And I, I feel like that with the strings and all that, I felt like Giorgio Moroder, that whole uh, Donna Summer, that... Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you think... Um, I'm going off track again here. I'm going to do lots of that today. Cause, uh, do you think John, Jim Dunlop, when the the wah was invented, that he it would be so primarily used? Like, you, he's making the wah, and he's like, oh, my God, okay, and it's going to do this to the volume and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Do you, do you, oh, my God, it's going to be... like Used in pornos? Yes, tons of pornos. Like I don't a, think he knew... Well, it's not used in pornos now. No, in it's the 70s. In the 70s pornos. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like, Waha now is just associated with pornos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. I don't even know. Is it associated with pornos? Like, I Or maybe it's f- just me. Well, I, I, for me, it's associated with pornos because of what I've been told from you. <laughs> is that, so that's, that's what I... But I don't know. Like, maybe if I... Like, if I go talk to my friends that, uh, you know, their parents were born later or they didn't watch watch <laughs> pornos maybe they'll be like i don't know what the fuck you're talking about like yeah because people i know people do right they do talk about it like yeah. people say i watch i've seen the internet where people are like oh yeah wow yeah right so it has it's, it's made its way into the next generation track number three sculptures of anything goes <laughs> What is that? Synth? Yeah. It sounds like synth with drums. How am I supposed to manage my infallible beliefs? That fake sense of longing kind of trying to cause a scene. Guess I'm talking to you now. Puncturing your bubble of relatability. I'm just quiet because I, I really like this right now. On the marble stage, leading to almost wherever. It does, it is, this really pitch, paints a picture of I don't know what, but it's, a, it's setting a real. City life oh nine flash that angle, grind a smile, gasp, and roll your eyes and help me <laughs> to get on. That that was that's my that's my favorite part of the song so far. From the chandelier. Hmm. I really like that track. I don't know what the living hell he's talking about <laughs> at all, but I really, really like the track. I love when he stopped there. It was like I said, it's my favorite part, right? Flash mm-hmm. that angle, ground a smile, g- g- uh, gasp, and roll your eyes, help me build. That was really, really cool, but that break there for that second when I just heard Alex Turner's voice. Yeah, and the gasp. The gasp, I would like to hear that a few more times because it's really, really cool having that space. It's uh, I did not expect this album to be this cinematic. Um, Very cinematic. Three tracks in, and I'm already kind of, uh, yeah, really getting that that feeling that it's a cinematic album. Great, great production. Really, really great production. And the intro, like you said, that's a great word, cinematic, because we went from what I what I thought was um, the Casino album, which was very show tuney mm-hmm. in the vocals and the phrasing was very show tuney. Uh, it's not like that here. It's very, like you said, it's very cinematic. Reminds me of grand big fat and then his lyrics are uh or his vocals are, are very like they're fucking mixed really really well and you know what maybe and i'm saying like maybe this this him getting the piano because a lot of things will change when you get a piano from mm-hmm. ha- from writing on the guitar you're gonna i've been playing for the last couple of days you've heard me and you've tinkered away too on the yeah. on the synth 
you it's different. It's a different feel. You want to elongate certain things and slow things slow down. Slow things down. I, I find a tendency I'm writing just so much different, right? And yeah. he might have not had the opportunity to do those things. See, Before he, his piano. Yeah, he, he he his voice was probably there, but when you're rocking away with the, you know, <clears throat> yeah, you got to kind of keep up to that. Yeah, you tempo. can't go Whoa! <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It doesn't. Hey, what the fuck you doing, Alex? Well, I'm going back to five oh five. That would be kind of cool, though. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Track number four: Jet skis on the moat. Jet skis on the moat. They shot it all in cinema scope. I love the Hammond organ there, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Lights out in the Wonder Park. Your sawtooth lover boy was quick off the mark. Something on your mind. You know what I know? There's not a lot of beat backgrounds. No. In a big in a chorus here, it's just him. It's just watch while the paint job dries. You know what I mean? Those yeah. those when it's over. Interesting pacing for this yeah, song. Yeah, I know, yeah. This whole album, really, but. I just, you know what? I don't know what's happening. I guess the guitar player just left the band. Like, there's not a lot of. Not a lot of guitar, right? It's a totally different style. Again. Again, uh, which is something cool. Uh, I always appreciate that with a band, whether it's an album that I end up liking or or disliking track number five body paint master of deception and subterfuge you've met yourself quite the bed to lie in so you don't let the sun catch you crying Wow, that's a cool line. Mm-hmm. So predictable, I know. With the wiring. Uh, there's your. Mm-hmm. Compoke your head behind the mountain peak. Don't have to mean that you've gone into hiding. I'm watching your every move. I feel the tears are coming on. On your face, and I'm keeping on my costume. Lots of these shots, eh? Yeah. <laughs> that was a cool yeah, you hear that goes through the head? Yeah. Yeah, he was. He's allowed back in the room there. <laughs> this end mix here reminds me of the Beatles, a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, no, with, it does. With the way the guitar is and it sounds Ringo's drums, but that boom. <laughs> and with the strings as well. Yeah, you know. I like that one a lot, actually. I don't know. You don't sound too... I don't sound too enthused with it. I love the music of it. I really love the music of it. Um, I just, again, with the lyrics, I just don't... This one was... uh, Some of of the lyrics stuck out to me and made me feel really good, right? Like, just gave me a feeling. I really liked the the tanning bed. That's That's the line I pulled up. Do your time traveling through the tanning booth so you don't let the sun catch you crying. Oh, that's the thing, guys. I, I love Alex Turner's writing. Yeah. Um, because it, it's very, I don't know, it's 
it's fantastic. It's just some of the stuff is not stuff that you're going to catch first listen. Track number six, The Car. Thinking about how funny I must look Trying to adjust to Travel size champagne To make a win Fucking very cinematic I love that instrumental break there, man. You go to fit something from the car. Beautiful orchestration in that and guitar. That was great opening with that guitar piece. I guess it's a guitar. Acoustic. Acoustic, yeah. I think that's the first time there's been acoustic. On, on this, this, on this, yeah. And then that dirty guitar in the inst- instrumental break was really, really cool. I didn't get anything from this to tell me what this is about, but... Uh, no, even I, yeah, I, it was hard for me to catch some of the lyrics. I, I just really like that song uh, for what it what it brought instrumentally. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I like the acoustic guitar in there. Very, yeah. very soft, very... Uh, you know, subtle, yep. n- nothing too crazy until the instrumental break at the end, which was nice. Yeah, and then um, that dirty, that guitar came in, rawr, and did all the sounds. But that was cool. I like that one. Track number seven, Big Ideas. That was actually the original title for Radiohead's Nude. Did you know that? No, I did not. I know that because I am a Radiohead nerd. So Big Ideas. Um, yes, all you Radiohead freaks out there can uh freaks <laughs> freaks yeah <laughs> you, you radiohead freaks well i'm one of them you're a freak so, yeah um you guys probably already knew that but for those of you who don't know nude was originally titled big ideas well, that's quite a number to see Wow, deep. Mm-hmm. Spotlit, getting lowered in. Man, he's he reminded me of Donald Fagan here from Steely Dan. Mm. I had big ideas. The band was so excited. The kind you'd rather not share over the phone. How they go. Well, that's the chorus. It's uh, yeah. Was Which just gonna say it. really says something that caught me there. Yeah. Really, it's been a thrill. That sounds like a goodbye song. I had big ideas. The band was so excited. That's <laughs> fucking. I love this stuff. But might be one of my favorites so far. Yeah. Really interesting. They've done this in the last song. Yeah. Dirty guitar with orchestration. Okay, big ideas. Um, that might be my favorite other than uh, the first track. Uh, I, I'm going to agree with you on that. That was my favorite track so far. And and I think it's spelling it out. Um, What's happening in the record and in, in the, the band. With the band too, man. Yeah, it seems like it. Or at least from what I got. I don't have the lyrics in front of me. but like, from, Well, it's first two. Coordinated release, nationwide festivities. We had them all out of their seats, waving their arms and stomping their feet. Just some some just just Some just hysterical scenes. The ballad of what could have been over and out, really it's been a thrill. 
I really liked that track instrumentally, and and it was yeah, uh, it was really good. And you know what? It, it was one of those melodies that was easily digestible. Yes, right. Yes. Track number eight, "Hello You." I'm finding of this album so far, the verses for me are far more better than the choruses. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I just, I'm, this is really good. Hello, you. Yeah, I, I like that one. Um, it's weird how you said that, though, because I thought the same, that the, the verses were catchier than the chorus, actually. In most of the, most of the tracks. Yeah. The chorus have been very, very short, and, and, the, and the melodies in the, um, in the verses are, are much more, like, greater, better. You, so are you liking the melodies on here more than the melodies on uh, yes. Hotel? Because you didn't even... <laughs> you didn't even I knew what you were going to say, though. I, I knew what yeah. you were going to say. They were just... They were, they were just easier to come. Yeah, they're just easier to feel, right? Track number nine, Mr. Schwartz. Oh, wow. Put your heavy metal to the test. Come here and kiss me now before it gets too cute. Really cool track. It's mm. making me feel something that's. See what interpretation is is that is you know I'm looking at this now is is Mr. Schwartz works either in the I was thinking it was the movie industry but uh, uh, music industry but I'm now thinking it's the, the movie, movie industry. industry yeah and he's having tea with the grips. Uh, after uh, asking after all the wives and the kids, and then do, he's getting, he must be getting the Mr. Schwartz staying strong for the crew, wardrobes, lint rolling, your velveteen suit, and smudging, smudging, dubbing on your dancing shoes. <laughs> and uh, he, he, a great song, like a cool song. You know what I find myself doing though now mm -hmm. with the last two albums of the Arctic Monkeys? I find myself feeling a little unintellectual because what I, I do is I'm, I'm like, People are probably getting this, and I'm not getting it. Uh, it's a, well, okay. I didn't have the lyrics up, so I can't. Yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, exactly. Say that uh, you know, I'm in the same boat as you, but I, I didn't know. Uh, I was just kind of, you know, listening to the instrumental and, yeah. and his vocal pattern and his vocal delivery and and uh, everything else on that track. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I I knew this one was not one that I was going to be able to grab too many of the lyrics from. From yeah um, yeah, I got the lint rolling line and whatnot. Yeah, that's <laughs> um, the important one. Yeah, track number ten, perfect sense. Very nice good night there. Mm -hmm. Then that's what it takes sometimes. A 
wrap my head around it all And it may Interesting. Three verses. Yeah, I think he is trying to change things. Yeah, that was it. No Three chorus, verses, no really? chorus, no no bridge. Interesting. That's a uh, yeah. That was a very interesting way to end the album. Um, it didn't feel like an end. It doesn't feel like an end. No. I just, I feel like there's got to be another track. Right. How many tracks are there total? Ten. Ten. Wow. Yeah. No. I I think back to. Uh, I mean, even. Uh, Tranquility Base Hotel had uh, the Ultra Cheese, which was that. That's right. Yeah, uh, did feel like an ending. Yeah, you know, I think back uh, to a lot of Arctic Monkey Monkeys projects, and uh, the last track usually feels like closure. That, yeah, this, that this didn't, didn't didn't feel like closure to no, me. It didn't make know. perfect sense. No, <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> yeah, no pun intended. Yeah, it didn't make perfect sense. I mean, sense. it was it was it was a good song. Like it wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just didn't feel like. Uh, something you'd close the album on. So I'm curious on why they uh, chose that one. But yeah, interesting. With Tranquility Base Hotel, I knew it was kind of divided, like 50-50 yeah. almost. People, some people hated it. Some people loved it. Yeah. There's some curious to see uh, where people are going to stand. And uh, more specifically, I'm curious to see what you guys think. So yeah. uh, if this is your first listen, uh, let us know in the comments what you thought. Uh, if you enjoyed it. And uh, this is probably a good place to wrap up the video, yeah. I'd say. So I uh, hope everybody had a good time. Uh, I had fun recording. I'm in a good mood today. It's Friday. You feeling good? I'm feeling good. It was it was a fun time sitting down here again, listening to music with you. And that's, uh, that's, that's what it's all about. And it's Friday. And it's Friday. And uh, I hope you guys had fun listening. Once again, thank you very much. And let us know what you think of the record because uh, we only do this so often on the channel. New records. Yes, um, that's true. So I love to hear what you guys think. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. And we'll see you soon. Peace. Take care. <laughs>